Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Andrew's Weather Center, the operator and the mind behind all things AWC. In this video, I wanted to talk about the difference between meteorological and astronomical seasons. And as you'll find, the difference is really quite simple. It just comes in the terminology. So when you look on your calendar and you see where winter begins on December 21st or fall begins on September 22nd, those are referring to astronomical season changes, which relates to astronomy and the Earth's position relative to the sun. Well, if you step into the world of weather, meteorologists start their seasons on the first day of certain months that go through the end of the last day of about a three-month period. And the reason that meteorologists do this and that records are kept this way is because it makes the seasons a little more evenly distributed. So if we talk about meteorological seasons, that would make winter 90 days, spring 92 days, summer 92 days, and then autumn 91 days. And in astronomical seasons, those numbers are pretty much the same, except there's a little more variation. And what this does for meteorologists is it just, if you're plotting the data or something, it separates it into periods of warming and cooling trends, and generally when you see most seasons changes. So the difference would be an astronomical season, say astronomical spring, may begin on March 21st or March 22nd, but in the world of meteorology, that season would begin on March 1st. And also on June 1st would be the start of meteorological summer. So it's really just a method of bookkeeping between astronomy, or excuse me, astronomical season changes and meteorological season. So if we take a step back from this bookkeeping and the calendar sense of these astronomical season changes, and let's take a look at how this looks physically and how we can represent this. So imagine you have the solar system in front of you and you have the sun and the earth rotating around it. We all know that the earth rotates, but there's an eccentricity in this Earth's orbit so that it's actually a little bit oblong shaped and looks like an ellipse. Very small amount, but it's still enough to create some seasonal variability. So fun fact, actually in the Northern Hemisphere summer, we are actually the furthest away from the sun in our entire orbit at a distance of about 94.8 million miles. And in the winter, we are closest to the sun in a Northern Hemisphere winter at a distance of about 93 million miles, give or take a few. So we can go a little bit further and look at the tilt of the Earth, which gives us some more clues as to why we have variability of our seasons on our planet. So back in our little model of the solar system here, pretend like your hand is Earth. And you won't place it vertically up and down because on Earth we are actually tilted at a 23 and a half degree angle. So if you subtract that from your 90 degree vertical hand, that's an angle of about 66 and a half degrees. And I guess a good way to visualize that would be maybe something like a roller coaster drop the first big hill on a roller coaster, we're kind of tilted at that angle. So when you have one season in the northern hemisphere, you may be tilted away while the southern hemisphere is closer to the sun, ever so slightly closer, but still enough to cause some seasons to be longer. And to make things even more complicated, our tilt is actually going to vary over a period of about 40,000 years. So you and me probably won't be around then, but our axis varies between 22.1 and about 24.5 degrees. So we have our meteorological seasons and our astronomical season changes, but there's also another thing called the water year, which isn't used so much in a meteorological sense. It's more of a climatological factor, a time span that we look at when looking at climate data. But a water year is defined as the 12 month period between October 1st and September 20th of the following year. And the reason that this isn't January 1 to December 31, it's not a calendar year because when it comes to hydrology and measuring precipitation, in a lot of places around the United States, precipitation that falls in the autumn or winter falls as frozen precipitation. And a lot of this doesn't melt until summer or spring of the following year, which can really impact hydrology and certain movements of the water cycle. So the water year spans from October to September to cover winter and then all of that snow melt and all of the frozen precipitation that will slowly dwindle down through the spring and summer and usually is all wrapped up and completed that entire cycle of melting by late August, September, which is why the water year ends there. And these are used for measuring hydrology and water movement throughout our ecosystem. And it's just another way to track and have a consistent way to measure the water movement through the water cycle over the course of a 12 month period. So as we recap, we had our meteorological seasons and our meteorological spring starts on March 1st, our summer on June 1st, our autumn or fall on September 1st, and our winter on December 1st. 
And for our astronomical seasons, those vary per year, but they're always around that around that two thirds mark in March, June, September, and December. That was harder to remember than I thought. And each of those are based on the Earth's position relative to the sun and help us to have some bookkeeping as two seasons. And then you also have the water year that we just covered, which talks about the movement of water through the water cycle and hydrology over the year, which starts in October and goes through September of the following year, which accounts for the falling frozen precipitation in the winter around the country that slowly melts and returns back to a, a base in late August and September. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something new and there'll be many more to come. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me on Facebook, tweet me on Twitter, or send me an email with a burning question you might have about the weather and hopefully it will make an appearance in a future video. So until then, keep your eyes on the skies and be safe. Have a great day.